I swear I was on a trail and now it's just gone. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm not lost, but it's not on a sanctioned trail. So as far as my own photography goes, I've been shooting color pretty much as the only thing for the past decade. While I still love it, I'm kind of getting a little burned out on just getting real finicky on color balance and I want to experience the joy of black and white once again. So I was thinking about what can I shoot on black and white and I came back to probably what my favorite aesthetic like ever in photography is like the, the mid-century the press photography look with the big flash bulbs and the big camera and there's that stark like flash drenched scene with the the background is all like not as illuminated because there's not enough flash to get back there kind of you know it's, it's often attributed as the Ouija look but you know every working press photographer in the mid-century was doing the same thing that's the kind of look I want to experiment with so a key factor in making that look was like the gear they used the stuff I really like it comes from when they had those you know every movie in the 40s and they're shooting that big ass camera with the big ass flash ball on it like the resolution of those cameras is so high it just gives the prints like its own little sharpening magic so in order to best replicate the look I'm going for I gotta bust out the exact same gear they were using back in the day well almost the flash here is a little more modern than what they're using because flash bulbs are kind of extinct but I'll make do so that's what this photo hike is gonna be about today is using the big old flash camera to take some big old flashy photos but with nature so as I've been hiking casually these last couple months I've been kind of taking notes of just kind of a uh, tree textures now this tree texture is a pretty pretty living healthy boring tree texture but what has been catching my eye lately is a lot of just what happens on like dead trees how they kind of start peeling apart and getting getting crazy crazy textures you know more like this guy right here it's just like you can see bugs have been chewing on there and it's this crazy twist and probably a branch here that fell off at some point that's that's the kind of stuff i think i'm going to try to focus on shooting today don't worry any other cool interesting things appear like like a deer i could see photography i'm still going to go for those but i think today hardcore tree photography let's take the first picture so since it is kind of daylight out and the look I want is more of a nighttime more look. What I'm going to do is measure the ambient exposure and then expose a few stops slower so that the natural light kind of gets suppressed and then what I bring at the flash is what really is the center of attention in the photo and just hopefully pops. So what do we got here? 160 at f8. Keep that in mind. So fun fact, since the last time I did a hiking video, I picked up a little front monitor to go on top of the GoPro so that I can make sure I'm framing this stuff good. But in this 20 degree weather, the bad on that thing lasted like 15 minutes. So the framing sucks from here on out. That's why. Oh. Look at this faker. He's like, look at me, I'm a tree. You're not a tree, you sir are a government plant and I see right through you. Oh. Look at this cute birdhouse I found. We can't not take a picture of that. So there's like a legit series of 58 different steps you have to take to take a picture with this. I just had a moment of panic thinking I didn't adjust the flash power for that last photo, but whew, the settings were correct for what I shot it at. Oh, I'm so happy now. But now on the birdhouse. Okay, so um, I think I like it more from over here, which, oh yeah, much better. Except you can't see me. Just, just pretend you could tell what I'm doing. So 
So here's a fun situation. Look what some animal did to this tree. Probably, probably a pesky woodpecker by all these marks up here. Dirty, dirty knuckle headed birds. Then behind it, just a sea of chaos of dead trees. I think I found a photo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, trees plus Ouija. Treegy? <laughs> I could hear you groan. Okay, let's let's set this one up. So if you're curious about this camera I'm using today, let me do a quick breakdown of what it is. First, don't let this strap fool you. It is not a Minolta. This was originally an anniversary speed graphic manufactured around 1946, I believe. Although over the years, I have replaced some parts of it from later models, such as the shiny bit here and the, the rails here and the, the entire back apparatus that lets me attach this pack of film to it. It shoots a four by five inch negative, which is a nice big sheet of film about yay big that stores a lot of data, makes it some real sharp prints, kind of a, a really, really crisp look that I really enjoy, especially my own work and looking back at old press photographers taken with these types of cameras back in the day. The flash is more modern. I don't know. I think this is from the seventies. It's very convenient and powerful so that's why i use it and that's my camera and you know i know everything about it back to hiking so look at this absolute chaos of a dead tree it's like staring into the maws of hell ripped open all its anger gushing out of the tree I'm gonna photograph it, okay? Yeah, let's do this one. Nice, part of the trim off the front of the camera fell off. Looks like I have some gluing to do. <laughs> so a few years ago, I came across a photo on some local photography Facebook group that had a picture of a birch tree and it's like bark was peeled back a little bit and people just tore this kid a new butthole for like, how dare you rip the bark off the tree? You're gonna kill it. And the guy's like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it, I found the tree like this. And they're like, that's not good enough. You're perpetuating people ripping the bark off of birch trees for photos and you're gonna kill all the trees, you rotten son of a bitch. But the point of the story is, this birch tree was dead before I got here. And if me taking a picture of its birch bark, birch bark peeled back incites you to go, wow, that photo was so good. And you run out in the woods and start desecrating trees so they can die so you can come back in five, 10 years and they're fully rotted out just to take the same kind of picture. Don't do that, you jerk. Jesus, Mary, mother of God. Look at the number some Dick nose woodpeckered into this one. You could see through the tree. They're so inconsiderate, those birds. We should arrest them. So of all the trees I've seen today, this is like the first time I've seen snow like up on the tree. It's a brand new experience for this hike. And I think, you know, I'm gonna change up my, my close up destroyed tree aesthetic and just uh, shoot Mr. Snow Covered Tree here because it's kind of cool. And I'm going to flash it so hard that snow's going to melt from a flash. Finding the angle for this one is one of the 
one of the harder angles I've done in a while. And um, once I get comfy here, I have to do something I haven't done in a long time. Shoot horizontal. Let's focus. Why aren't you shooting? Fog the lens. The flash didn't go off, so I need to move into a different film pack if I want to make this picture with my flash. Apparently, my flash batteries too are succumbing to the cold. Okay, let's try this again. Shoot ready for exposure. And. Son of a bitch. So it seems to me when the camera's in this orientation, something about the flash trip mechanism doesn't work. So I took way too many photos of that that I needed to. But I also think I'm just going to call it a day because that gives me six photos, which is the most I can process at one time and the most I can scan at one time. So it makes my job a hell of a lot easier editing all this. If all my pictures suck, I don't have to, you know, edit so many sucky photos. So I'm going to pack it up and head home.